Hey guys, Jengar here. Welcome to today's realistic review in which we are taking a look at the Chinese P47D28 sitting at 4.7 battle rating a Thunderbolt. Yes, we can finally touch a Thunderbolt again. <laughs> this is always fun, I have to say. I love the Thunderbolts. They are fantastic. But what you do have to realize the most important thing in a Thunderbolt is that you don't want to turn right away when you see this kind of opposition at the same altitude. The Thunderbolt needs to be wound up, she needs to be run hot, you need to get her up the altitude, get some speed under your belt and then go into the fray as uh, preferably the highest plane. Once you are the highest plane you can dominate in this plane and a couple of Thunderbolts can turn a match around, especially when it's a couple of Thunderbolts that are working together. You will see this in this coming clip where me and my squadron mate, actually it's not my squadron mate, <laughs> it's an ex-squadron mate, but he's still on my Discord, uh, how we turn things around in this match. Anyway, you look at that while I go through the details of this plane. The Thunderbolts, fantastic, I love them and you have to love them too. But Side climbing is important, as I said. It is a fast plane. It, the maximum speed in this plane at sea level without web is 550 kilometers an hour and with web 579. At 4500 meters, she'll go up to 504 without web and 528 with web. And finally, at 6500 meters, you can take her up to 478 kilometers an hour without web and 503 with now those speeds are very nice, at altitude this plane is almost untouchable, um, she performs very nice there. Top speed in the dive is just as well, by the way these speeds are in indicated air speed without mech. Top speed in the dive is 840 before she redlines and 915 before she rips apart. Now those are jet speeds, let's be fair, you can reach jet speeds in this plane. Uh, in a dive and she performs very nicely there as well. The control stiffening definitely supports this handling. Uh, the 550 kilometers an hour at that speed you will see the first tick in the roll rate and at 750 you will see the second but it still stays reasonably functional and uh, the elevator stays pretty decent as well for a very long time. So the control you have in a dive the handling in the dive is actually quite good and that makes you get guns on target very nicely. So this is the ideal boom and zoomer. Uh, there are not many planes that are more suited for boom and zooming than the P-47 and uh, this one is no exception. <laughs> we are right now at 5000 meters as you see we uh, are clearing up the, the planes that were on the higher altitudes with us and um, these things man. Once they are wound up, once they have the altitude and are at a level where they perform better than most other planes, they are beasts. The stall speed in the plane is 160 kilometers an hour. That is no more than average, but that's quite logical. But uh, the performance for the rest is so good that it, uh, the plane can uh, handle that uh, little bit higher stall speed. The, fire, the firepower in the plane is excellent. You have eight 12.7 millimeter M2 Browning machine guns, also known as 50 cals, with uh, 425 rounds per gun. Fantastic. I think I use the ground target belt uh, in this uh, video. You can also use stealth. Uh, I hear the tracers are nice again as well. But there are several options for this plane. I do like the ground belt though. Um, a lot of uh, AP rounds and uh, that gives for... Uh, some good effects. <laughs> you can also equip this plane with a lot of bombs and rockets or combos between the two if you want to go ground pounding. But I mean, a P-47 on the deck, ass to the grass, is brings tears to my eyes personally. I mean, I know historically she was a great ground attacker, but in War Thunder this plane is an absolute magnificent plane coming from the higher altitudes. And uh, the ground pounding P-47s often lose their lives. And I'm pretty sure there's some people who specialize in that. And then after throwing their bombs, they wreak havoc among the enemy at lower altitudes. But um, many of them get shot down. And if you have a few P-47s that dive down next to the bombers, 
then it is a very great chance that you lose the match. Anyway, ammo load on this plane is also excellent. 425 rounds per gun, fantastic. The acceleration in a straight line is great. And in a dive it is very good as well. Yeah, fantastic in the acceleration. The engine in this thing is very powerful and uh, brings you a lot of horsepower. Energy retention in the plane, in the horizontal, is excellent. Once you come from a dive and you throw on the war emergency power, you know, the horizontal energy retention. Absolutely fabulous. So, yeah, excellent there. Um, in the vertical, it's decent. I wouldn't call it better than decent. Um, there are some planes that have better uh, vertical energy retention. They are a bit smaller, they are a bit more sleek, they have a little bit less drag. But all in all, the horsepower often uh, pulls you through and uh, still makes you perform good in the vertical, especially when you're coming from high up and you have that speed. Uh, the climb rate also supports that very good climb rate, so you can definitely zoom back up and uh, regain your altitude to go for another boom and zoom run. So there is that uh, very good performance in this plane. The turn time in the plane is below average. With flaps you go to average, the flaps only rip off at 560 kilometers an hour. That seems nice, but uh, in a straight line on the deck with web you can already uh, rip off the flaps. Because the plane is pretty fast, you have to be careful with the web and with, uh, with your speed and with flap usage. Because you can rip them off and uh, it's never good in a maneuver when you're fighting for your life to, uh, to lose a flap. <laughs> kind of messes up the control you have, right? The roll rate in the plane is good and uh, in a certain speed window somewhere between 350, 400 and 550 you have a very good roll rate. If it's a little bit slower the roll rate suffers and if, it's, uh, if it goes beyond the control stiffening parts where the compression starts to tick up um, you also lose the roll rate from 550 onwards. 550 only a little bit but especially above 700 you, uh, you definitely notice the loss in the roll rate maneuverability overall is uh, decent yeah still especially at higher speeds you can even uh, turn uh, one or two turns uh, quite surprisingly well <laughs> not spectacular but i said surprisingly well so you can surprise some people who are not paying attention but i can tell you good pilots that see a p47 coming from altitude they usually pay attention uh, the overheating in the plane is present, definitely present, especially with a lot of web usage, but it is manageable. And, um, well, if you pay attention to it, it shouldn't be a problem. Durability is fan-freaking-tastic. It can soak a ton of damage, and um, as in reality, by the way, because uh, German pilots have been known to empty their whole ammunition load in P-47s, and the P-47 was still flying. I even read about a story where a BF-109 pilot was um, emptying his everything in a already damaged P-47 and after he finished his ammo he flew uh, wingtip to wingtip with the uh, P-47 pilot. They waved at each other and they said their goodbyes. And uh, I, I think they even saluted towards each other. So those kind of stories are fantastic. Uh, pilot interviews. If you haven't seen them on YouTube, try to uh, watch them. They are fantastic. But anyway, the durability in this thing is absolutely freaking fantastic. So what is this plane? It is uh, a boom and zoomer and an energy fighter. It cannot uh, be a turn fighter. <laughs> Unfortunately, you can't have everything in such a huge plane, right? But boom and zooming is its primary role and she can also energy fight quite well. The faster she is, the better. Um, although if you go beyond 750, you start to lose a lot of uh, your... Uh, your control, your uh, roll rate, stuff like that. So, but in general, the faster the better. And you have a long way to go in those dives. Uh, 9.15 is the rip speed, so to about uh, 8.90 you can safely dive and still pull out of it. And um, yeah, it's a fantastic plane. I can't say otherwise. And it's uh, very nice that it's in the Chinese tree giving the, the Chinese uh, a fantastic plane sitting there at the 4.7 better rating. Ah, and But yeah, um, I would only use the bombs if you are um, trying to spay this thing. Stay low and uh, 
get as many ground targets as possible, shoot some attackers down. That's a very uh, legitimate way to spade the plane. But once it's spaded, and I mean, you should be high in the clouds somewhere, uh, boom and zoom in your enemies. At least that's what I would advise you. Um, as I said, a uh, thunderbolt that is spaded with ass to the grass brings tears to my eyes, as I said. And uh, that will always be the case, despite a few people who made uh, their living out of that and are very good at that. But uh, yeah, this is a winning plane when you are on altitude. And when you have a buddy with you, well, <laughs> the enemy team can uh, send their prayers to heaven, right? It is that good. Well, let's see what kind of rewards we got for that performance. Two matches with four kills, I got them quite rapidly as well. You get quick performances. We have Final Blow, The Best Squad, Terror of the Sky and Bulletproof, 35,000 Silver Lines and more than 5,000 Research Points. I'll see you in the conclusion. Hey guys, so here we are after the match. A P47, what can I say? Brilliant, fantastic, magnificent. Oh man. They are so good. They are so good. Yeah, you just gotta love them. Uh, we all say, uh, Jug is love, Jug is life. It is true. They keep you alive. They are fantastic. They are magnificent. Did I say that already? <laughs> it's a fantastic boom and zoomer. She can energy fight as well. You have to take your time. Be disciplined in the beginning. You have to side climb. You have to be patient. You have to really side climb because the thing is... Um, it needs some time to wind up. You need to work on that. And there is better climbers out there in the opposition. So you have to make sure that you're on the side, not close to the middle of the map. Don't get out climbed and wait, wait, bide your time, get up there, observe the match, develop and, um, and make your decisions wisely. Once you go into the fray, you should be the highest plane, preferably. And from that position, you can wreak havoc. You can change the match around if it hasn't been going well for your team now this strategy can sometimes mean that you only get one kill or two but in general um it's just i mean you just need to be there trust me try it and you will love this plane guys i hope you enjoyed the video i want to thank you all for watching and i'll see you guys next time bye bye if you're new here make sure to hit the subscribe button become part of this community if you are already a subscriber, don't forget to like the video, do leave me a comment, and if you really feel like helping out today, make sure to share the video with your friends and let them know about the channel.